Hey people, this is my weekly rundown of things in entertainment news interests me, and I apologize for not being able to upload a video last week. My laptop was having problems, so I had to turn in for several days, which really sucked, and I obviously wasn't able to put a video together without a laptop to put it together on. But the bright side of that is that I get to talk about kind of a lot of stuff in this video, starting with Kick-Ass. There have been a lot of set pictures and videos released from Kick-Ass 2. You can see this one here featuring the superhero team Justice Forever. We've got Aaron Johnson is in the center as Kick-Ass, Jim Carrey to his left, our right as Colonel Star as Donald Faison, on the far right as Dr. Gravity, and Clark Duke, you can sort of see him in there as, I forget the character's name, but he's... Dave Lazuski's friend Marty, who is now a superhero in this movie. So, pretty cool stuff. If you've read the Kick-Ass comic, it looks like a pretty decent adaptation of that, but if you haven't, it looks pretty decent just in general. I mean, we've got a lot of colorful costumes here, so it looks like it's going to be a pretty crazy movie, and having read the comic, I know it's going to be pretty crazy, so I'm curious to see how the movie turns out. I mean, I... I have said in the past that I didn't really like Kick-Ass 2, the comic, as a story that much, but that said, the movie could be better than the comic, and I'm curious to see what Jim Carrey does with this role, because I have this feeling that he is going to be the Nicolas Cage of this movie, and just kind of steal the shit, well, I don't know, I think Hit Girl kind of stole the show in the first one, but Nicolas Cage was also pretty interesting to watch, and took people by surprise in how very fun he was in this role, so Jim Carrey might be pretty awesome as Colonel Stars, and I'm hoping he is. Mark Millar, the creator of Kick-Ass, will be acting as a consultant for 20th Century Fox in their Marvel comic adaptations, probably sort of like what Joss Whedon is doing for Marvel Studios for the Phase 2 movies. The interesting thing here is how they describe it in the press release. The 20th Century Fox production president, Emma Watts, said this... In addition to his groundbreaking Marvel work, he is simply one of the most original voices in comics today and will be an invaluable resource to us and our filmmakers as we look for fresh opportunities to innovate within our shared Marvel universe. That's That last part there is what has got some people talking, and I'm not sure if it's just the language that she chose to describe the Marvel properties and that they all come from the same place, or that 20th Century Fox is now looking to follow the Marvel Studios path of connecting their movies together, and that's why they're trying to bring in someone to consult and kind of oversee integrating these movies together. But this is potentially pretty big here to have like a secondary Marvel universe, and could really benefit some of these 20th Century Fox movies connecting the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. Could be pretty interesting, so maybe long ways down the road, 20th Century Fox and Marvel Studios can make a deal and these two universes can merge. But, yeah, I'm not really sure, so don't go, like, leaping off of this to say that there's definitely going to be a 20th Century Fox Marvel Universe, but it seems like it's a possibility at this point. Speaking of Marvel and 20th Century Fox, the first official photo for the Wolverine has been released, and you can see it here, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Not that much really revealed about this, but it's a pretty cool picture. In other Marvel movie news, fans of The Amazing Spider-Man will be very happy to know that it has finally been confirmed that Mark Webb will be returning to direct the sequel to the movie, which is currently set for a May 2nd, 2014 release date. Marvel Studios has recently released some concept art giving us a closer look at Thanos from The Avengers. So if you're curious about Marvel Studios Phase 2, he's probably going to look a lot like this when we see him in The Avengers 2. Marvel Studios has said that they have plans to release the Ant-Man test footage online eventually so fans can see it, but while we're waiting for that, a fan has created an animated storyboard that basically shows what happened with that scene. I think other people who were at Comic-Con saw this and confirmed that, yeah, this is pretty much what happened. So if you're curious about that, definitely check that out. This picture here is not from that storyboard, but someone has said that this is sort of the feel of what the Ant-Man costume looked like in the test footage, so I think this is a pretty cool looking costume, and if they developed something like this for the movie, it could look pretty badass. And for our last story of this week, 
Cartoon Network's DC Nation has a new preview out, which is pretty cool. It shows footage from the upcoming season of Green Lantern and Young Justice. And Green Lantern shows us our first look at Sinestro, who was not in the first season at all. And I think a lot of people have been wondering, where the hell is Sinestro? Because he's a Green Lantern. I mean, he's part of the core. You'd think he'd show up somewhere. So we'll probably get an explanation about where Sinestro has been this whole time and get a feel for who he he is and how he kind of plays in and relates to Hal. And I think that Guy Gardner has been confirmed for this season as well, so should be pretty interesting. Young Justice, I don't want to start any rumors because I'm not 100% sure, but I am pretty darn sure that that preview showed static. He wasn't in costume, but there was definitely a black guy there with dreads who was shooting lightning and I think he was riding on something like that disc that Static rides on and I'm pretty excited about that because I love Static as a character I mean I love the animated series it was part of the DC animated universe and it's like third season maybe maybe even after its second season but I think it was a great show and I did read the first comic of the New 52, Static, and I didn't think it was that great, and it didn't really make me want to read more, but I think the character has a lot of potential, and I was hoping to see that character integrated into Young Justice, because it's such a great show, and I think the character has potential to really interact well with the characters they already have there, and given the quality of that show... I know they're probably going to do this character very well in a very satisfying way. So I'm hyped for this. So I'm like 95% sure that Static is coming to Young Justice this season, which might be the most exciting news that I've delivered this whole video, which is kind of saying something if you consider all the major stuff that I talked about. So that's pretty much all I've got for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe, and tune in next time.